<laughs> yeah, besides it being our earthquake anniversary, uh, the new bankruptcy laws had changed. It's very, very, very tough to file BK outside of the exclusion of, you know, a, a, I'm drunk and I hit you, uh, earthquake hits, a tornado hits, a flood hits, that's out of your control, among nature related. Otherwise, you just can't file bankruptcy that easily anymore. So if you go to bankruptcyaction.com, which I'll punch something here in a minute, bankruptcyaction.com, so people who are contemplating, you know, giving up their house instead of doing a short sale, they just can't sell it, uh, to say, okay, I'm going to just walk away from everything. If you don't then, remember it, it's on my website under links. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> bankruptcyaction.com. And it'll give you the ins and outs of what you may or may not qualify for a bankruptcy. Of course, the only truly way to know is you got to sit down with a bankruptcy attorney or your client has to in order to really specifically get to the details, do I qualify or not. Uh, so, But it makes it very, very tough to file bankruptcy. So when the laws had changed protecting their creditors, myself, many, many, many moons ago, uh, not very much. I got myself two hundred three thousand five hundred seventy dollars and twenty three cents in debt by the age of twenty three. Oh, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Yeah, with no mortgage, just credit card. Actually, no, I should have had a mortgage, but that's the only smart thing I did with myself. Um, <laughs> we still have it today at the condo. But so I got myself in debt. How did I do that? Well, you know, drinks from me, dinners on me. Ooh, maybe you're looking up by the way. You know, so it just got to a point where I was just getting myself upside down, and got to a point in my life where I was using credit card money to pay credit card bills on the back end. It's like pouring water into a pitcher with a hole, and it's a never-ending story. So I got to a point where I was running out of uh, you know credit card room. People say, well, at the age of 18, you have to get 18 to get credit in the United States. You know, how did you manage to get yourself off the first base to get credit? Well, a little thing called an authorized user. My father, who is a very you know, wealthy man, did very well with Ford Motor Stock and working for Ford Motor Company for years, gave me access as an authorized user to his Amex card with a 125K limit on it. So I piggybacked his credit in a way, like the, like the shuttle back in 1979, piggybacking on top of the airplane. So for the next three years, you know, I went at the age of 18, on February 85 when I turned 18, it shows up in my report. And also, not only did I inherit the whole 125, but also inherited the whole time the account's been open, which you have for 30 years. I had credit before I was born. Right. So, yeah. so immediately, the bureaus, you know, you ever get offers in the mailbox, the bureaus sell this stuff. Okay, that's how they make like $300 million a year net on, you know, uh, net income based on, you know, them selling our credit information. Are you a credit card hopper like transferring balances? Are you low use of credit? Are you high use of credit? You know, you, you, you know, so forth. They sell your habits as well. So in turnaround, within 30 days, swear to God, go offers on a new auction for 20, 30, 40, $45,000 pre-approval. Sign for every one of them. So by August of 85, I was only 18 and a half. I was 52 grand in debt. It was very easy to do. Very easy to do. Not knowing that okay, when you charge two grand, you get the bill next month, 25 bucks. I can afford that. I know I still owe the principal balance. So I got upside down, upside down. So the, you know, within a few years, I was over 200 grand in debt. Combination of uh, you know, IRS taxes and a car that was repossessed and, of course, credit cards. So I've been sued, been in court, been there, done that, been there, done that, all the way through the whole process. And in the beginning of 1990, everyone knows how bad the economy was. Not as bad as it is now, but it was bad. And just graduate from college and say, well, gee, can you can get you a job? That it's not as bad now as yeah. Yeah. yeah, I know. But I think a lot of us were here. You're right. I guess it depends on how you look at it. But 90s was bad, okay, period. And so I couldn't get a job. You say, well, you need five years of work experience plus a degree. Well, was, I just graduated. Someone's got to give me a chance with the experience. So I couldn't get a job. So my mother's best friend comes to me in the summer of 1990 and says, Robert, he says, I heard you destroyed your credit and heard you fix your own credit. It was, it was improving over time. And I, I got divorced and I need some help with my credit. So gave her some tidbits and, you know, six point score of 60 points. And she got her new mortgage from her settlement. And also to get checked in the mail for 200 bucks. I said, dang, <laughs> we got credit buys, you know. So b before the birth of the internet, it was in its infancy back in then, you know, calling Sacramento, calling D.C., calling this, calling that, and, you know, and calling Fair Isaac about starting a credit pair organization and did that and launched it on 13 November 1990 never looked back. And since then, we now we have uh, uh, four franchises already on board. And with my direct and indirect employees, we total over 400 now. So we grew really fast. So, and in, since then, though, I've learned a little thing called the Fair Credit Reporting Act laws. Is anyone familiar with the FCRA mm -hmm. of 1970? They pretty much state any, mainly three things. Anything report that is inaccurate, erroneous, or can't be verified must be removed. Yesterday's a good example. I had a client we enrolled in our services. Uh, uh, young Vietnamese couple, they've been here for you know, years, and the ex-husband, or soon ex-husband, had committed fraud on the wife's report. I don't care if you guys are happily married, the other person cannot you know, forge the other person's signature without that person's physical consent. It's fraud, I don't care if you're happily married or divorced. What ended up happening was she got a Toyota Motor Credit uh, loan on there for 35000 
She was down at the dealership this morning, not to name dealerships, and picked up copies of the application, and it's not hers. So mm -hmm. the dealership's going to get in trouble along with the, the finance company for not properly checking all the right you know, T's and dots and I's. So in short, fraud happens by quite a bit. Okay? Uh, I'm actually in the process right now of trying to get my certification to actually teach um, identity theft classes, which will be coming up here very soon. It's oh, actually issued, issued by the post office, so I'm waiting for my certification to come through. And in short, you know, how to avoid you know, being a, a, a victim of identity theft. We'll talk a little bit about that later. So it comes down to it, I started learning about the FCRA laws in 1970 and started repairing my own credit and finding loopholes on how to get rid of stuff even though I owe the money. There's statute of limitations, I had to sue aggressive collection agencies. So in short, I ended up suing three of the many collection agencies after me in court and out of court for harassment because they called you too many times in one day or they called you too early, too late, et cetera, pushing the envelope. So I ended up suing them for about 85K out of court of the 200 bet I owed. Mm -hmm. And they had nothing to show for it, but I got half my debt wiped off. Okay. So it came out without having filed bankruptcy and by the age of 30, I'm 41 now, I was debt free with much, much better credit. Never do that again. <laughs> Never again. So in short though, we're going to go through the gifs of it, you know, it's not so credit and, and hopefully maybe you can use some of the stuff to actually improve your own credit level on your clients. What I passed out was there is a, um, a <laughs> form right here. It's a, just a little informational form. At the end, you're welcome to complete it uh, for a client. You're welcome to put on here, I've got five clients that need to, you know, for credit repair. Because what we do is that we always give your clients a free over the phone consultation of, the re of their credit. We have to see visually where they send a up an action plan for their credit cleanup. If it's dead or bad credit, old, new, if they already have 800 credit scores, but they have a question for it, fill this thing out and give it to me at the end. Yeah, yeah, if, it, if it's for you personally, fold it up and give it to me like this, and then sh sh like this. But otherwise, uh, feel free to make copies. But otherwise, you're welcome to put all your comments on here. Or I got you know six, seven clients ready to go. Because the bottom line is, guys, we're here to make money. Uh, you do loans, you do real estate sales. It all domino effects of that. If I can help you turn the clients into approvals, we're going to make more money in a bad economy. Okay, so that's what we do. We'll have to fill that at the end. So be so kind. Go ahead and get my packet out in front of you. Does everyone have a packet? Yeah, yeah have one. Does anyone short a packet or need a packet? Yeah, here's a couple. There's somewhere right there in the middle of the table. So, everyone got one? Okay, good. One more. One more. Good. This is right there. Two more. Right there. Okay. Yeah. Make sure you give that, that other form to Daniel with the blue label. So, if Daniel always has an overflow. Sorry about that. So, anyway, so we're going to go through the ins and outs of credit. I recommend to you, and I'll punch out my website here. We'll take a look at my site when you get a chance. Um, now, who in this room, I used to, this is the first question I'll ask, even a bunch of first time home buyers, who in this room has not seen your own credit report in more than one year? Raise your hand. Two years. Three years? And the ones more than one year or more haven't seen your credit report, why haven't you checked your own credit? Actually, I, I haven't seen it. It's, it's coming because I was the victim of identity theft. Yeah. <clears throat> they actually had to shut down my bank accounts. Got it. Well, yeah. So besides the fraud, why haven't you, uh, how, why haven't you haven't seen your credit reports? Lazy. Hey. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Or someone may say, well, I, I did a refi a year ago and I got a two or three year prepay. Just bought a new car. So I don't need to check my credit. Well, does anyone know what percentage of fraud does happen in the United States? Approximately according to Secret Service, 65 percent and growing. Wow. According to Fair Isaac, your FICO score, Fair Isaac and Company. Mm -hmm. Mistakes happen by 79% of the time on your report. So the reason why I say who hasn't seen your report more than one year, usually half the room does this, which they did, because if your last name is Smith, Jones, Johnson, Brown, Williams, we like in the Vietnamese community, you know, fraud can take place very easily. You have a, you know, a elementary school buddy, last name is Lipkin, L-I-P-K-E-N. There's only one of them in California, and good Jewish name. He had mistakes on his report, okay? It was his father who was on the East Coast. So if you have a common last name, you might know that fraud, uh, not fraud, but mistakes can be on your report. I have to say, because we do a lot of uh, statements of information, you know, SIs yeah. in our business. And a lot of the time, someone, yeah, credit's fine. Yeah. And then when we pull the SI, even on an uncommon name, we have, I kid you not, a $5,000 deficient bill, a judgment against a wife who was married to someone who owned a nightclub for fish. And it showed up right before at the end of her, uh, her yeah. escrow. A $5,000 fish bill. Yeah. So you, and it wasn't her. Fish bill. What? But yeah, a bill for fish. So <laughs> almost anything can show up, and it may not belong to you. So that I have to agree with yeah. Robert here. I got a call from Essential Twenty One office yesterday, and uh, down in the uh, 
South San Jose.